This is the Unagi E500 electric scooter. Some people call it the Tesla or the iPhone of electric scooters, and it is the first electric scooter that I have ever tried. Let's get straight to the point. My friend was so kind to let me try out the Unagi E500 she owns, and the first time I saw the name on the scooter, I was like, that's a very delicious Japanese food, and the E500 definitely did not disappoint as well. The first thing that caught my attention was how simple the E500 is, and I'm talking about the entire user experience and the design. It does not require an app to start using the scooter, and that is a very very big plus compared to a lot of electric scooters on the market. It is actually very sad that a lot of them require an app to even work, like why? I know a lot of devices nowadays give you an app to have more control and information about the device itself, but please don't make it a requirement to even start the device. What if I don't have a smartphone? What if I don't want to download an app and enter all the information to sign up for an account? It is a scooter, just let me go from point A to point B. I'm sorry for the rant, but the Unagi E500 really surprised me because I can just power it on, start kicking, and it will just work. All the settings and controls can be done on the handlebar. You press and hold the power button to turn it on, single click it to turn on the headlight, double click it to turn on the second motor if you have the dual motor version. On the left side of the handlebar, you have a horn that you can use by holding on to the tiny button, and the horn is very loud, just a little squeaky to my liking, and you have a brake paddle that I will talk about later. On the right side, you have another tiny button for you to change the riding level. Level 1 and 2 is more for beginners, and they put limit on the acceleration speed and top speed. I would highly recommend you to start with level 1 because the torque and top speed in level 1 is still very fast. Remember, this is my first time riding an electric scooter. My friend obviously is a level 3 rider, and we forgot to change it back to level 1 when I first tried to ride on the E500. To be honest with you, it was a little scary because the torque was a lot stronger than I expected. I was holding on to the handlebar so hard that I felt like I was going to fly off the scooter if I don't do that. I'm sure a 5 year old will do better than I did. Anyway. And remember to always wear a helmet when you are riding any scooter, electric or not. I was doing it wrong, so don't do what I did. After a couple of minutes of riding, I started to get the hang of it and it feels very very nice and smooth riding the E500. The acceleration pedal is basically linear and there is no sudden jumps throughout the throttle, and that is a very important feature if you are riding the scooter every day. Talking about smoothness, the E500 is extremely quiet. Not that the other electric scooters are loud, but the E500 literally makes no sound when you're riding it, so you can move just like a ninja that it's on a scooter. Well, a modern ninja if that makes any better sense. One thing I noticed when riding the E500 is that the motors will naturally slow down and do the braking if you are going slowly, let's say at a jogging speed. If you go over that speed, they won't do the slowing down thing, so you will have to use the electronic brakes with the left pedal. There is a mechanical foot brake that is also the fender of the back wheel. I would say that it's mainly for emergency to give you a more confident brake and stop experience. I don't think you will use it that often. Well, I hope not. Another thing I noticed with the E500 is the turning angle. I guess it is pretty much the same with any other scooters because of its compact wheel size. The turning angle is very narrow, it is just around 45 degree max, so any tight turns, it is not going to cut it. When it comes to comfortability, I would say the E500 is not the most comfortable to ride due to the lack of suspensions. You can feel every single bump and crack on the road, so I would suggest you to get the E500 if you are going to use it mostly in the city. I can understand why they didn't include suspensions because that's another part that they have to fix potentially. More parts, more things you have to worry about braking, so I don't really mind the little bumpiness on the road. Unagi tries to compensate the bumpiness with their very innovative honeycomb style tires. I think they help a little bit, not much, but I really like the idea that you don't have to worry about the tires getting punctured, and I'm sure these tires will last a lot longer than the air inflated ones. With the carbon fiber handlebar, the E500 is very very solid when riding. There is literally zero play on the handlebar, 
It doesn't wiggle and move at all when you are pulling on it. This is very important because it gives you so much more confidence when controlling and turning the E500. Talking about being solid, the deck is very solid as well. It is a single piece of machined aluminum that I really don't think you can break it easily. It is like trying to break a MacBook without any tools. Another very high quality and impressive material used on the E500. Again, single piece of aluminum means less parts to break and fall apart. One thing I wish they can do better is to have a wider deck. I'm not a big person. I wear size 8 shoes, but I still feel a little crowded when putting both feet on the deck. It is not uncomfortable. I just wish it is wider. Let's talk about the user experience of the E500. As I said before, it is very simple. No app, just power it on and you are good to go. When you turn on the E500, the LED brake lights at the back will turn on automatically. It is very nice so you don't have to worry about if they are on or not. I prefer brake lights being always on instead of turning on when you press the brake pedal. It is mainly for other people to see that you are on the street. They don't really care if you are braking or not. So always on brake lights feel much safer to me. Another safety feature is the LED headlight. You can turn it on by single clicking the power button. They are very nice and bright, similar to those LED flashlights you can buy. Definitely not the brightest, but it will help riding at night. Again, so other people can see that you are on the road. The display on the handlebar is very bright as well compared to a lot of other electric scooters on the market. You can definitely see the things on the display even under direct sunlight. When it comes to folding and unfolding the E500, it is extremely simple. All you need to do is to power off the scooter, press down the button at the bottom, fold the handlebar down, hear the click, and you are good to go. For unfolding, just do the opposite. The Unagi E500 weights at 26.5 pounds and that is definitely on the lower end of the scale compared to other electric scooters. My friend can just carry it like a backpack when it is folded. Since we're talking about numbers, the E500 has a top speed of 20 miles per hour and I think that is way fast enough to ride in the city. Anything faster, I'm definitely not going to feel safe. I know a lot of people are looking for speed, but I'm not looking for injuries, that's all. The E500 can also hold a rider for up to 275 pounds. As I said before, if you are someone who is a lot bigger than I am, it might not be the best scooter for you not only because of the weight limit, but the narrow deck will also make it uncomfortable to ride. On the website, they said the E500 has a range of around 15 miles. Of course, try not to rely on that number at all because they were most likely testing the scooter in a best possible environment. My friend went on a ride from 100% to low battery blinking level and that was about 11 miles of distance. It involved a normal sized rider. Of course, I didn't ask her for her weight. I didn't want to get hurt. <laughs> and some hills and bumpy roads. So I think 11 miles is a pretty good real life mileage on the E500. Overall, I was very happy trying out the Unagi E500 and I think it is worth the hefty price tag compared to other budget electric scooters on the market if you are looking for the premium build quality and simplicity. If you are going to use the scooter every day, I don't see why you don't want to invest into one that will last you longer. That's it. Those are my thoughts on the Unagi E500 dual motor electric scooter. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. If you want to see us testing more electric scooters, leave a comment as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.